I've dropped the kids off at camp today. So I've got a couple of hours that I'm trying to finish up a project that I've been doing. And, you know, it's summertime, so I've just been working on it as I can. And right now I'm trying to decide if I want to add some wood trim to this range head that I've been building. I'll take you inside and show it to you in just a minute. But, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Working on that. Our house has a lot of wood accents, so I was thinking that it might be cool to tie in some of the wood. So we're just playing around. We're just testing it, just cutting down some pieces to see if I want to do a full border or just a little bit. Just clean up my saw here a little bit. Where did you get this? Um, I actually asked for this for my birthday last year. So I feel like as you, <laughs> this, this saw can look pretty intimidating to people. And when I first got it, it honestly was a bit. I started with a lot smaller saws and you know, my dad showed me a few things on this, but it's been a lot of watching other people do it to learn. Um, just doing a lot of trial and error. But I'm getting a little more confident in my cutting skills. I'm still mastering angles and things like that, but straight cuts are pretty, pretty easy. And I'm hoping this year to use it more to start building some more things. I've got a project where I want to build a whole hull tree um, storage system, so I definitely need big tool like this so if there's like a birthday an anniversary Christmas I've been asking for power tools I got quite a collection now so all right it's starting to rain so better head inside um, got my piece of wood here so whoo, better go inside quick rainy so our property that we bought one of the things that really was appealing was that I could have a workshop I know that's funny. That's one of the things that I was most excited about is that I could have a workshop, but it's not connected to our house. So when the elements hit, you got to kind of walk quickly. So go ahead and go in. Alrighty. This is our little like mud room area and that project I was talking to you about, I, I was hoping to get it done before the school year, but summertime has been um, just busy and focusing on the kids, but this room right here, I want to build like a huge hull tree that has all the storage, um, cubbies, everything where we can just put all my kids' clothes, book bags, the bazillion shoes. So stay tuned for that project. But right now, let's go into the kitchen and you'll see what I've been working on. It's this range hood. This is just something that I've always like envisioned in my forever home kitchen. It was just like a beautiful plastered like limestone range head. So we built one. How did you learn to do all of this? Huh? Just as you go. My dad did help me a lot with this one, but the great thing was, and you can watch some of my videos on this, I actually found a company that created the frame for me. And so that was great. I didn't have to do any of those wood cuts. And then I was able just to finish it with the drywall and the plaster. Again, I have some videos if you want to check that out. Um, but I'm so happy with how it turned out. Now it's almost done. And the thing that I'm trying to decide is if I add a little wood element or not. Our house has a lot of wood. We have some beams like this. So I thought it would tie it in. But the reason that I'm hesitant on doing that is because we're not done remodeling the kitchen. You'll see this wall behind me is pretty blank and bare. So right now I'm deciding if I'm going to replace these countertops. They're actually not a real stone. The previous owners put in just like almost a prefabricated top. So I was thinking about replacing these with a quartz or marble and then doing a backsplash all the way up here. So I don't know if I should add this first or if I should wait until the room is done. So that's the thing about when you're designing a space and you're just doing a little at a time. Sometimes it's the harder because you hope everything comes together the way you envision it, but you also kind of change your mind as you go. Like I'll start with one idea in mind and then sometimes I'll be like, oh no, I love this tile. So I'm just a, he a little hesitant to add this on first, but we're playing around with it. Um, so when I was younger, my parents flipped houses. And this started, well, they built, our first house they built, I was, I was in kindergarten. Or I was, I was probably going into, no, I started kindergarten in that house. So I was probably, oh, 
four or five when they started designing this house they were building. So I remember some of my earliest memories are going to like design centers because Pinterest wasn't a thing. So if you wanted to get inspiration, you had to go to a physical design center. So they would bring us there. And then, you know, so that kind of started, like I remember looking through floor plan books and going and picking out tiles. And I was always really thankful that my dad let me do those things. He wasn't like, oh, you're a girl. You're not going to do these things. He was like, get in here. We're going to teach you how to paint this wall. We're going to teach you how to fix this thing. Now that I look back, I've always been doing little projects here or there, whether it was refinishing a piece of furniture or sewing something or painting something. But it wasn't until I left my real estate career to focus on my young kids that it gave me the space and time to like really pursue DIY. It's been just something that's naturally revolved. You know, we've lived in houses and I always kind of, I think it was just my blood. We would buy a house that needed some work. We would live there temporarily um, just while my husband was in school and training and things. And we, we knew we'd only be there for two years. So my real estate background told me, let's buy something in a great area that just needs some cosmetic work. We'll fix it up over the two years that we're there. And then we'll sell it. So that's what we did. You know, my husband was in a surgical residency. I was raising small kids and doing real estate. And I would just slowly be renovating these houses that we were living in. We'd sell them, we'd make a profit, and we'd go on to our next house. So it wasn't until our previous home that I really tackled a major kitchen renovation on my own. And I think doing that gave me the confidence to start pursuing it more and taking on bigger projects and feeling a bit more confident in my abilities. This was right in the pandemic, just like everybody else. I was like, oh, I'm gonna download TikTok. I'd always done social media, especially in real estate. You know, I would make a lot of informational videos talking about the market, showing home tours. So I had had some experience with social media, but when I downloaded TikTok, it kind of felt like this little safe space where no one knew me and it felt like a place I could share my projects. And so I just started sharing my DIY projects and little by little, it started catching on. And I thought to myself, wow, people really like this stuff. They, and I really liked it. So it was a perfect combination using some of my past experience and skills and putting together my creative passions. And it just kind of organically grew from there. And I started making more and more videos. What does your cost do? Oh, today's goal. Keep the tiny humans alive. That's the hardest goal of all. What I've really discovered is when I chose to leave a career or focus more on being at home, I think it's so easy for moms and caretakers to lose a piece of themselves or lose touch with the things that once made them feel alive because you're so busy taking care of everyone else. So when I started painting rooms or I started painting furniture or renovating, it ignite, ignited this passion in me that had really been buried for a long time. Not that raising your kids is not like the greatest purpose, but when you have a tangible thing, when you can look at something and say, I built that, I did that. You know, in 25 years, I'll know if I did a good job with my kids. But today I can look at some cabinets and go, wow, I did that. And so it's a little pat on the back. It's a little bit of a self-esteem booster. It's a little bit of feeling like you've accomplished something. I don't have a ton of time because the kids are at camp today, so I'm gonna to try to wrap up my projects. Tell me what you think. Should I leave this wood here? Should I not do it? It adds a little something, but again, until I know exactly how we're finishing the backsplash, I'm on the fence about adding it. But yeah, thanks for being here.